I was only 19 years old and I couldn't, I didn't have any college, but they were getting running short of pilots, so I was selected for pilot training and went through pilot training. It, it was a little bit difficult because I only had a high school education, but learning to fly was rather easy for me, to tell you the truth, uh, and so it was really no problem. We were not allowed to do research flying. That was NASA's area of responsibility, and they guarded it very jealously. Now, they had the X-1, the first airplane was designed, you know, with a rocket, and was designed to fly faster than sound. And it was, since it would burn liquid oxygen and water alcohol, it was carried aloft on the, under the belly of a B-29 up to about 25,000 feet, then released, then you fired off your rocket, which gave you about, you know, 10 minutes of power, and flew at high Mach number. And since jets could not get up above a 0.9 Mach and dive, the X-1 moved into the arena where we knew very little about. And, uh, what was your favorite flying experience? The, the landing. <laughs> now, I've, I've flown a few different types of models, and basically, I've had the capability of pretty well analyzing all the mechanical devices on a fighter because I served as a crew chief and was a trained enlisted man. And I knew, uh, I've pretty well known about everything there is to know about an airplane when I fly. And I've, uh, I've bailed out a couple, like engine failures or fires or things like that. But it's a matter of knowing your, your system and if you're going to live for a long time, which, which I have, obviously. And uh, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to learn a few things. And you guys are doing a wonderful job, and, and uh, we back in the States depend on you a hell of a lot. And I noticed, just looking around, Uncle Sam furnishes you guys with the best damned equipment there is, and you use it the right way. And we appreciate that. So as a GI, uh, I say thanks a lot. December 1946 and June 1947. The main question throughout this period
Why do you think it's important to come visit the troops? Well, because I was a troop one now, why not come and visit it? To ask the question that way, you know, hell, the guy I sent over here, I spent, uh, you know, two, three years in England fighting the Germans. I also spent a couple years in, in uh, Vietnam flying against them. And I miss back, I miss back home, and I'm sure the guys that are over here miss their homes or their families that they had to leave back. And when you have a chance to come over and visit them, it's interesting to find out. And, you know, basically you're, you're looking at yourself 50 years ago. And that's the reason it's fun to go come into a place like, like Afghanistan, see guys like you that, uh, who have left their families or if you have one and spend a lot of time over here. That's part of it. There's only one word that, that probably describes the whole damn thing. You wear in a uniform, and that's duty. That's paramount in your whole life. And that's the way I looked at it. it I, I spent, you know, came in the military at age 18, 1941, as a private, and worked my way up to corporal, and went through flying school as a corporal, got my pilot wings, made me a staff sergeant, and I flew combat, flying in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and, and Pakistan. And I, I've enjoyed my career. I'm just lucky. I, you know, I've been shot out a few times. That, that's part of the game. And I've also spent about 12 years as a research pilot flying a lot of new stuff above 100,000 feet. And had a few accidents, but that's part of the game. What do you think of the troops serving today? Well, that's a stupid question. Hell, they're the best in the world. What do you what do you expect me to say? <laughs>